Yep, that's me, and I'm passing through traffic in the all new 2023 Ford Puma. Or is it all that new? Yeah, you're probably wondering, is that a Fiesta? The answer to that is a yes and a no. Let me explain. It's a no because the Fiesta is long gone from the South African market and it's a yes because it is based on the Fiesta platform also known as the Ford Global B-Car platform. Except for the price of course. At first glance you could mistaken it for a Porsche and you would be forgiven. The thing is a beaut. The headlights are said to be inspired by the Ford GT and the grille somewhat looks like that of an Aston Martin. Because it is inspired by the Ford Fiesta platform, you'd expect it to be a reasonable budget compact SUV for the ordinary man. But is that the case? In this video, you and I will review this vehicle, looking at its exterior and interior features, take it for a drive and launch it because this is Mzansi Popular Rides. We will also give it the meal score at the end. Is this Fiesta replacement worth your consideration? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's dive into the review. Sometimes you come up with an idea and you nail the formula. The assignment, make a budget car to replace the Ford Fiesta as the global automotive trend is moving towards SUV oriented vehicles. The outcome is a Ford Puma which looks so good and almost premium and you decide, I know it's a Fiesta, but let's put a premium tag to it and to add to it, you forget that this model was launched three years ago. Keep watching and I will tell you what I think of the pricing. The Ford Puma range consists of two derivatives, namely the Ford Puma Titanium as well as the ST Vignale. The main focus of the review will be on the Titanium, with some reference of course to the ST Vignale here and there. Up front, the Titanium features a bold and sporty design. You have LED headlights that are sleek and narrow and the grille is large and imposing. The Puma's front bumper is also quite aggressive with large air intakes and a pronounced chin spoiler. You have LED fog lights on the sides of the grille in contrast, thanks to the ST line, the Vignale features a grille with some diamond pattern effect and a much more aggressive lower front bumper design with a chrome touch and gloss black paint finish under the fog lights. Titanium, Vignale, Titanium, Vignale. As you can see, the Puma features a slick and aerodynamic side profile. The roof line is slightly sloping giving the car a sporty appearance. You have black wheel arches which cover the black machine 17 inch alloy wheels. The vehicle features black side skirts with a chrome strip touch finish. The window trim is blacked out with a lower chrome trim. You have body colored door handles and mirrors with integrated turn signals. The ST Vignale features body colored wheel arches and side skirts and of course an 18 inch alloy wheel. The model I would go for is the ST Vignale if and only if price was well tagged. The rear of the Puma is more rounded and curvaceous than the front. The LED tail lights are large and wrap around and the tailgate is equipped with a roof spoiler. The Puma's rear bumper features reflector lights on either side and a metallic grey plated diffuser with PDC sensors on the titanium. You also have a reversing camera just above the number plate. In the ST Vignale, you get a sportier body color coded rear bumper with a fake exhaust trim but it's a nice touch. The boot on the titanium is not electronic. Boot capacity with the seats up is at 456 liters and you can extend the space by folding the seats down. You have a flat load lip and an adjustable false floor which will let you carry a little bit more than usual if you want to. You have an additional secret storage compartment under the parcel shaft and underneath that you get a space saving spare tire for those portal moments. For my cooler box lovers, you have a 12 volt socket in place. You know what they say, there's nothing as good as a cold one. However, just a reminder, no matter how cold it is, let's not drink and drive. So then, what are the performance stats? Underneath the hood lies a 1 liter turbocharged engine and yes, you are correct, it's the Fiesta's 3 cylinder turbocharged petrol engine. Power output is at 92 kilowatts of power and 170 newton meters of torque. The engine is mated to a 7-speed dual clutch automatic transmission. Let's launch it and see what it's like from a standstill.
0 to 100 km per hour is set to happen in about 9 seconds. I'm not sure my premature launch achieved that, but just know you can do it. Later on, we will take it for a drive and you will see how it performs in urban and highway driving scenarios. For now, let's look at the interior of the Ford Fiesta. Oops, I meant Ford Puma. Ford Puma, yeah. The interior of the Puma, just like that of the gone and long forgotten Fiesta, is stylish, comfortable and well equipped. The cabin is trimmed in high quality materials including soft touch plastics and leather wrapped accents. In the titanium, you have cloth seats which are comfortable, however they are manually operated, so manual labor is involved here. You have an analog instrument cluster with a small info display which will provide you with important information like traffic sign recognition and your compass, vehicle fuel information and radio information amongst others. You have a leather wrapped steering wheel with multi-function buttons for your cruise control, voice control, adaptive cruise control and following distance setting controls amongst other features. The Puma Titanium comes standard with features such as a wood effect applique for the cluster bezel and instrument panel, fabric inserts for the door interiors, an automatic air conditioning system. You also have Ford Sync 3 infotainment system with an 8 inch touchscreen information display. Apple CarPlay and Android Auto are also compatible with the infotainment system and navigation comes as standard. This particular vehicle is equipped with the optional driver's assistant package, which includes active park assist, a rear view camera, front parking sensors, a driver impairment monitor, intelligent adaptive cruise control with traffic jam as well as traffic sign recognition. With the ST-Line, you're able to opt for a styling pack which includes a panoramic sunroof you also have a full digital instrument cluster with the pouncing puma display if you look closely you will see the pouncing puma on the outside as well rear passengers are treated to comfortable seats with isofix anchor points for your toddler's child seat i am 1.86 meters tall and with the front seat in my comfortable sitting position well there's your space you do not have an armrest at the center of the rear passenger seats and neither do you get a USB port. Practicality is not an issue with cup holders both at the rear and front door pockets, center console and you also have additional storage in the glove box and center armrest storage area. You will also find two type B USB ports, a wireless charging pad and a 12 volt socket for your charging needs. Ford Pass and Wi-Fi connectivity are also part of this package. All of this except a sunroof. Let's now take it for a drive and see what this vehicle is all about. In my opinion, the 1 liter turbocharged engine is punchy and responsive. It provides good performance for everyday driving and it is also relatively fuel efficient. During my short test drive, I was seeing figures between 6 to 6.5 liters per 100 kilometers. Ford claims a fuel average of 5.3 liters per 100 kilometers on both the ST line as well as the Titanium. And don't forget that both models use the same 1 liter turbocharged engine. The Ford Puma proved to be a great car for urban driving. It's small and agile which makes it easy to navigate through tight streets as well as any urban driving scenario. The engine offers enough power to get the Puma up to speed quickly even in city traffic. You have good all-round visibility making it easy to see other vehicles and pedestrians. Hi and that's me keeping a serious face because I am driving. The rear view camera and parking sensors make it easy to park the Puma in tight spaces. The blind spot monitoring system alerts you to any vehicles in your blind spots when you're changing lanes and you also have a lane departure warning system. This system will alert you if you start to drift out of your lane. Once again on the highway the Puma's engine is enough to propel the car up to highway speeds quickly and easily. The 7 speed dual clutch automatic transmission is also smooth and efficient. Overtaking is also not an issue, the vehicle has enough power to hold its own on the highway. The ride quality is rather good, the Puma has a well-tuned suspension that provides a comfortable ride even on rough roads. The car is also relatively quiet, making it easy to have a conversation with passengers or listen to music on the highway. Highway driving can be so relaxing, the adaptive cruise control will do all the driving for you while you just sit and drive along. As mentioned, this is part of the driver's assistance package at 21,100. Overall, the Ford Puma is a great car for both highway driving as well as urban driving scenarios. It's comfortable, quiet, fuel efficient and comes with a number of safety features. 
With that being said, it's now time to address the elephant in the room. With all features selected, the recommended retail price of the Titanium will set you back 592,040 Rand. Cost of ownership will therefore be 14,953 with an installment of 11,575 fuel of 1078 assuming you'll fill up the 42 liter tank at least once a month at the average fuel consumption rate of 5.3 liters per 100 kilometers and you should be able to get 793 kilometers and an estimated insurance of 2300 based on my profile look 593,000 rand is a lot of money personally i would use the money to go for something like a ford ranger xl model manual at 638,100, which is more car for the money. And if you're thinking of the Puma ST line, well, you're looking at 653,340 with a driver's package of 21,100 and styling package of 17,300 included. For that, you can get yourself a Ford Ranger XL double cap auto 4x4 at 663,100. Aye, the pricing is not make sure. So what do you think of the pricing? Let us know in the comment section below. It's now time for the meal score. For the interior, based on our review of the vehicle, I'll give this vehicle an 8 out of 10. For the exterior, I'll give it an 8 out of 10. For engine and performance, I'll give it a 7 out of 10. For the overall package, I'll give it a 6.5 out of 10. Yep, you heard me right. You have to get yourself an optional service plan. For safety and technology, I'll give the vehicle an 8.5 out of 10. The Ford Puma therefore gets a meal score of 38 out of 50. A huge shout out to Ford Woodmeat for letting us review this vehicle. If you're in the market for this vehicle, be sure to visit them. Well then, until next time, 